imagine this field of information, this, this, this intelligence that lives within you and I that's governing everything material in this world. It's a self-organizing intelligence. You have access to it, so you better get present with it mm -hmm. as well as you can get present with anything else. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. It, that, that, that realm you can't experience with your senses. You can only experience with your awareness. So then people have to take their attention off their bodies and go from a somebody to a nobody. Mm. Take their attention off the people in their life and go from that they identify with and go from a someone to a no one. Take their attention off the things in their life, their cell phone, their computer, their car, and go from something to nothing. Take their attention off where they sleep, where they work, where they're sitting, and go from somewhere to nowhere. Mm. Take their attention off the predictable future and the familiar past and time and go from some time to no time. And now if you're taking all of your attention off of everything material in this three-dimensional reality, now there's only one other thing that's left. That means you're in awareness, your consciousness. And now that is the bridge, that is the door to the quantum field. And you can't enter the quantum field as a somebody. So if someone has spent their whole life working on having the perfect body, or so much so they have so much attention on their pain, where you place your attention is where you place your energy, it's going to take some work for them to take all of their attention off their body, right? Because they'll go, they'll do it and then they'll go back, let's see if the pain's still there. Oh, the pain's still there. So it's a little bit of a waltz in the beginning, but as people start applying this, you start getting better at it. As an example, we have Bond University, uh, 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 University in Australia on the, on the Gold Coast. Uh, senior researcher took the large majority of my brain scans and they had, she had them analyzed by her graduate students and they, they statistically looked at everything. One of the most startling things for the research team was our community's ability to, go, to, to get to that point where there's nobody, no one, no really? thing, nowhere, no time. And I'm talking four seconds. I'm talking five seconds. I'm talking nine seconds. Just like, just give me a second. I know how to do this. They, they've practiced it enough times that the creative moment is when you get beyond yourself, when you dissociate from everything known in your material world. Turns out when you do that and you start changing your brain waves, your brain waves slow down into alpha and theta, you're suppressing the memory bank of the known self that keeps you plugged into three-dimensional reality. Mm. When you quiet down this mechanism, now all of a sudden you start connecting to that field. And when you can stay conscious in those subconscious realms, when you can literally regulate and change brain waves, now you're in the operating system where you can make those significant changes. So we now know that when people apply the formula, and they do that properly. Now they're walking through that door where they're ready to create from it. In other words, you can't create from the known. Mm -hmm. You can't create with your body. That's matter trying to change matter. And you can do it, it's just gonna take a long time. Right. But when you create from the field instead of from matter, there's a whole different set of dynamics that takes place. And, and why not push that envelope to see, okay, if we've done this, we've done this, is it possible to do this? As an example, we do these wonderful healing circles where you see these dramatic instantaneous changes. So the person who's healed themselves of some health condition, when it comes time to heal somebody else, that's, they're going to say, well, now I understand the science. I understand how this all works. I know how to get beyond myself. I know how to open my heart. They start piecing it all together. Let's take the formula to the next level. Now they witness a significant change in a person's body in real time, right there. So then the next question is, okay, like this happened many times. As an example, the woman who was at the event in Mallorca, Spain, uh, her brother had a massive stroke uh, in, uh, in Colombia, and she went back to Colombia, and he was in a coma for two weeks. Mm. She called up the healing circle and said, hey, can we do a healing on my brother? Now, if you're playing by the rules of Newtonian physics, three-dimensional reality, you're gonna say, well, you need to be in front of the, the guy in order to heal him. But if you understand there's no separation in the quantum, that there's, everything's connected when right. you're in that place, so wouldn't that be the next application of the formula? So they go over the science, they get it. Okay, we don't need, we just need a picture of him, and that's our coordinate. And if we're in the field- we're Sending a frequency to that coordinate. Yeah, yeah. But, but you're not sending it anywhere because there's nowhere to send, there's no mm. space and time it's there. You're connecting to you're it. You're connecting to it, exactly. That's a great, great way to say it. In one hour after that coherence healing, he comes back to consciousness. Wow. Now, that's the extension of where we're going. You see now, 
now now we're progressing. A woman who was in one uh, who, uh, one coherence healing group is a pediatric nurse in uh, in Children's Hospital in Seattle, and again witnessed the amazing miracle after our event in Toronto. Mm. She comes back and there's a little they call them friends. There's a little guy failing. Doctors hit him with the paddles, they use all the, all the drugs to bring him back, and they walk out of the room, and they say, we, we lost him. She walks over, puts her hands right in the field, and this kid comes right back online. Wow. Doctors are like, what was that? And now, so we have, the, a lot of our interest now is, I wanna get 50%. One out of two people, we're collecting the data in this coherence healings. When we're 50%, we're gonna walk into a children's hospital. We have three children's hospitals right now that are interested in us. We'll show them the data. Mm. We'll show them the results. We'll say, we don't want any money. We'll never even touch the kids. All we wanna do is just change their lives. Well, Thing. let's stop telling the story of your past and let's start telling the story of your future. And, and people who aren't defined by a vision of the future, for the most part, are left with memories of the past. The, mm -hmm. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced in this moment. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems. Yeah. And those problems are memories that are tattooed in the brain that are associated to certain people and things at certain times and places. So the, moment the person wakes up clean slate, they start thinking about the problems they're thinking in the past. If you believe your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, well, there's a possibility that your past is gonna be your future. Mm. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So then the moment you start recalling the problem, you start feeling unhappy, now your body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you mm. think and how you feel creates a state of being. So people reaffirm their identity based on the past, right? And it turns out that wow. the redundancy of doing that, conditioning only requires, requires an image and an emotion. And most people are unconsciously conditioning their body into the familiar past, into the known. So now if you're in the familiar past and in the known, you're gonna crave the predictable future, right. right? That's the known as well. And there's only one place where the unknown exists and that's the eternal present moment. That's mm. the sweet spot of the generous present moment. So you gotta, you gotta labor to get that person beyond the emotions that keep them tacked or anchored to the past. And yes, it takes an effort to do that, but if you keep working with the formula, you'll reach that elegant moment where there's a liberation of energy. Mm. And now your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind is not believing, it's living in the same past experience 24 hours a day because you're liberating the body from that emotional state. So you ask a person, why are you so unhappy? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so resentful? The moment you ask that, their brain is gonna associate that emotion to a past event. Mm, to a memory. To a memory. Yeah. That's because they have nothing to look forward to in their future. So if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, it just means to me that you're more in love with your past mm. than you are with the future. So how do you teach people to believe in a future that they can't see or experience with their senses yet, but they've thought about enough times in their mind that their brain has literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says that's absolutely possible. Mm. We know that. And how do you teach a person to select a new possibility in their future and begin to emotionally embrace that future before it's made manifest to such a degree that their body as their unconscious mind is believing it's living in that future reality in the present moment and they're signaling new genes and new ways ahead of the environment. Now, to their body begins to change to look like the event has already occurred. We've proven that that's possible. Now think about this.